who here went to college? Raise your hands. I did too. I got to spend four years on this beautiful campus. I learned a lot about computer science from my classes and even more about life from my friends. I also developed a lifelong glove of orange and black. <laughs> this is Teppo's son. He recently learned to walk. Um, and even though Teppo doesn't believe me when I tell him this, he's going to be walking off to college pretty soon. So Teppo, how do you think your son's college experience is going to be compared to ours? I must admit that I don't quite know. <clears throat> I have more questions than answers when I think about how will education be 20 years from now, both here in the US and around the world. But I do know that some things must change. And here are four. Education must get better. Too many people enter college unprepared to learn and leave unprepared to get a good job or be good citizens. One scary statistic from a recent study is that 36% of students across a range of universities made no significant uh, improvement in their critical thinking, reasoning, and writing skills in four years of college. We can do better than that. Education must get cheaper. If we doesn't, then the billions of people around the world who need to be educated are not going to get access to the high quality education they need. Just here in the US, there's over a trillion dollars of student debt. Anyone here still have student loans? Education must be able to adapt faster. Anyone's college or university, was, was, were they specifically good at making quick decisions, adapting to change? Now, there are benefits to keeping a steady course, but sometimes changing education feels like taking a herd of elephants and trying to get them to change directions. And finally, education has to last longer. It may actually turn out to be that four years of college is too much. But four years of education is definitely not enough in today's quickly changing world. So let's review where we're starting with traditional education first. The traditional education bundle has elements that are both non-academic, like housing and football teams, and academic, like professors and classes, and it comes with a hefty price tag. There's a lot of experimentation going on right now in ways of unbundling education taking these elements in different combinations to meet various different needs. One interesting example are taking online classes without the football teams and having them for free. Uh, now, these obviously will not solve all the challenges we have in education. But it raises some interesting questions that are dear to our heart, because we work at edX. And there we publish courses from top universities freely available to anyone with an internet connection. So, Victor, how does this uh, differ from the standard educational bundle? Sure. So before I worked at edX, I spent several years uh, helping create and teach classes at Harvard. Um, and there we had a pretty standard model. We had the professor give lectures. I spent hundreds and hundreds of hours creating problem sets and then grading them when they were submitted. Um, and of course, students came to my section, um, did problems. Um, Teppo has worked a lot with creating edX classes, so why don't you tell us about one of those, and we'll see how it differs. Sure. So as a program manager, my job is to work with professors and their teams and find the various different components that come together to do the best possible online class that we can. So for one MIT course, we started with the legendary physics professor, Walter Lewin, added in two other professors, three lecturers, one postdoc, uh, sprinkled into the mix some students, uh, a program manager, uh, video team, software engineers, and blended it all together to create the online version of Walter Lewin's electricity and magnetism. And Victor was one of the software engineers that built the platform that makes all of this possible. So do you want to talk about some of the elements of the class? Sure. So here's one of the screens in the class. Um, and so we have Walter Lewin, uh, or a video of Walter Lewin, describing the science behind Van der Graaff generators. Um, it's immediately followed by problems, like this one asking, you know, did you actually understand what you just saw, um, where your student gets instant feedback. Uh, we have interactive simulations like this one, written specifically for this class, um, that shows th how electric fields change as charged particles move in them. Um, and finally, we have a discussion forum where students from all over the world can connect um, and discuss the material and help each other learn. 
So for example, in this particular screen, uh, one student posted a relevant video from YouTube that illustrates some of the concepts, concepts discussed in the class, um, sparking a discussion where you know, people were asking why does this work and what's going on. So together, you know, compared to the experience I had at Harvard, this is somewhat different. We get this bundle. Uh, we lose that in-person connection that you know, I had with my students in section, but we get this global forum and global connections, and we get instant feedback, uh, which is something that was much harder to do in a traditional model. Um, so let's look at the edX class with the four aspects we said before. So one way that the edX class is pedagogically, in fact, better than traditional lecturing is because the lecture is split into small snippets and you get instant feedback. So there is more engagement with the student. It is freely available for the whole world. And the team can adapt faster because they don't have to spend any energy recreating the parts that they loved. Instead, they can focus on improving the parts that they weren't happy with. And it opens up new possibilities for lifelong learning. Our colleague Ruth's father uh, is 89, and he's still actively taking edX classes. Of course, not everything about the online class is better. Um, in particular, it costs a lot to create such a class. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, you really lose that in-person connection between teacher and student that can be so important in some cases to keep students motivated and to sort of help them get through the material. But one of the great things is once we've created this class, we can come up with yet another bundle. So we're already trying things like this, where we take you know, Walter Ruin's course and we bring it to a campus or a thousand campuses. Um, and you can have the professor there Instead of having to spend those hundreds of hours creating the materials that we already have, you know, guide their students through it and really focus on addressing the sort of individual needs that they have and not just uncovering the basics. Um, so this is just one combination. And you know, the future of education is going to involve lots of different experiments and combinations, you know, only some of which will involve online learning. Um, and so naturally, that brings us to blenders. Or how do we most effectively blend online and face-to-face -face elements in education? And how do we create the most effective educational bundles to meet the needs of different learners in different kinds of circumstances? And this is where we need your help. As we and others continue to experiment, uh, we want you to try out the different bundles and share what works well. So when you come across a delicious educational smoothie, Tell your teachers, tell your friends, tell your school. Because the more demand there is for awesome learning experiences, the quicker the best educational bundles become the new standard. Of course, it's important to remember that some of these educational smoothies are going to have actual snow and ice, not computers. For example, this was my classroom on a course I took several years ago with the National Outdoor Leadership School. We spent several weeks trekking through the mountains learning about leadership and teaching, um, and trying to find our way through the woods and not get too lost. I learned a lot from this course. I find myself using things I learned here pretty much every single day, uh, which is not something I can say for most of my college classes. This was one of the high points of the trip. We were on top of a mountain and could really see the landscape in front of us um, and sort of got a glimpse of where we were headed. And I find that working in you know, sort of the ever-changing landscape of education today is sometimes like this, where it feels like we really see what's going on and we know where we're going. But more often, it feels more like this, which is an afternoon on the trip trying to find camp in a half-frozen swamp in the middle of a snowstorm. But we did it. Um, and one of the things I learned from this trip and from this course was how important it is to really embrace the uncertainty when kind of exploring new territory that you don't know already. Um, and I think that if we do that in education, we'll be able to discover better combinations that you know, more successfully help people teach and help people learn. We hope that we've managed to convince you that the future of education is exciting and that perhaps you're a little nervous about it. Um, and we hope you help. Join the discussion around this, try new things, and share what works. So I don't know if my son's college bundle will include a football team or not. But what I do know is that when we continue, all of us, to experiment and share the best educational bundles, we can make education better, cheaper, faster, and longer. Thank you. Thank you.